Yeah, I'm in mill power right now. Yeah. And we're at 0.99 mox. So as soon as I go afterburner, we're going to break the mox. Okay, so I'm looking down here. Okay. You see I'm 0.99 mox? I do see that. All right. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. AB. There's the mock, man. We just broke it. 1.02. Nothing happened. 1.04. 1.05. Well, so yeah, I altimeter can, went crazy. I can tell you that I can feel the jet starting to climb. Yeah. And watch what happens when I go idle. Feel yourself slow down like that. Oh wow. Yeah. Lord. Really slow down, right? So, and, the, and the altimeter went ballistic. Yeah, it kind of went crazy, right? So that's just the. I think that's the um, the pressure over the pitot tubes. Yeah, the static pressure. Yeah. Breaking the sound barrier in the cockpit of a high-performance jet is something I've dreamed about and studied about for years, and it finally just happened. I was expecting a shake or maybe a little rumble. Nothing happened. Other than these gauges that bumped, I wouldn't have known we went supersonic. But the reason the gauges bumped is fascinating. Let's start with this. This is called a pitot tube, and this is how you measure how fast a jet is going. This is essentially the pointy part of the jet. This is an old one that's kind of beat up, but if you look at the end of it, there's a little bitty hole. As a jet flies through the air, the air molecules come to the pitot probe and they ram inside that hole. And if you've got a pressure gauge on the back of that hole, you can measure what's called the stagnation pressure. Basically, it's how much air is stacking up, which is, of course, a function of how fast you're going. Another thing about pitot tubes though is they have a second pressure measurement and that's on the side. You see these holes here that's called the static pressure ports and they go to a different pressure tap right back here in the back and if you take the difference of this and this and you plug it into a fancy equation you can calculate the airspeed of the aircraft. So if you think about it, there's two main things that influence a pitot tube. Number one is the velocity of the aircraft. The more air that comes into that front port, the higher the stagnation pressure. But on the static pressure port, it's mainly affected by the altitude of the aircraft. At lower sea levels, you'll have a high static pressure, but as you go up in altitude, you'll have a lower static pressure because the air is thinner at higher altitudes. When you start breaking the sound barrier, though, weird stuff happens. For example, the Prandtl glass transformation says that an aircraft should experience infinite air pressures as it approaches Mach 1, which of course would destroy the airplane. This theory is known as the prandtl glauert singularity. So this theoretical infinite pressure that the front of the aircraft sees due to the prandtl glauert singularity turns out not a thing, which is great because now we can go past Mach 1. What we do see, however, is a sudden increase in pressure right as we approach Mach 1, and we can see that by looking at the altimeter. You see how the altimeter reading seems to go down by 500 foot just before punching through Mach 1? That's because the pressure is increasing at the static port on the front of the aircraft. But once you punch through Mach 1, the altimeter reading goes up by 1300 foot instantly, and this has a very interesting explanation. When an object goes faster than the speed of sound, a shock wave is created. And to take a closer look at that, let's revisit a previous episode of Smarter Every Day. We fired a supersonic bullet and used Schlieren imagery to visualize the shockwave. The pressure on the front of the shockwave is higher because the air is piling up in front of it, but the pressure behind the shockwave is what's called a rarefaction, meaning it's at a lower pressure. So now compare the shape of a pitot tube to that bullet. If we have a shockwave on the front here, that means the static port is going to be behind that shockwave in that rarefaction, which means it's going to see a lower pressure. That makes the gauges on the dash read a higher altitude because a higher altitude is equated to a lower pressure, and that's why the gauges bump when you go supersonic in a jet. I always knew that was a thing, but I never knew why, and it feels really good to finally understand the physics behind it. Another thing I thought was interesting is this is the...
Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah.